Hello and welcome to Nithranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Beret and in this video we're going to learn how to play the game called Tycoon 1981 India, the board game uh, by Siddhant Chand, published by Zenwood Games. This is a prototype version of the game, so all the components in this video are prototype components. And by the way, I'm using a small wooden meeples to demonstrate the player order and the player actions. These are not included in the game. So let's get started. In this game, players represent big industrial houses in India trying to dominate six industrial sectors, finance, minerals, fuel, agriculture, energy and transportation. They do it by building these industries on the map, but first they have to gain these industries in the bidding process, which takes place here. And in addition to that, players are trying to meet the objectives from the planning commissions and also the objectives of their own corporate agenda. There are two major scoring areas in the game. One of them is this influence track and the other one is the asset value of your industry. If you win in both areas, you also win the game. If you win only one of those areas, you will also need to have the highest favor, which comes from your corporate agenda. It may come from the policies you have on your side. It may come from the industries in which you are active and so on. So you need to focus on assets or influence and definitely on the favor. To set the game up, assemble the game board. It has this map of India. This is the bidding track. This is the actions board. And here we have the industry tracks. And at the top we have these planning commission cards. These are something like the end game objectives. Then here we have the policy cards and the industry cards. In addition, we have these two tokens, which are end game sector bonuses and they refer to two of these sector tracks. They are always different in each game. And we also have these tokens, they're called conglomerate bonuses. There are two of them in a three player game, three in a four player game, and they are awarded to the player or players who have presence in all six sectors of the industry. Finally, down here we have the merit cards, which provide one-time bonuses to players. And this is the round marker. And this is the pawn, which indicates which of the four regions of the map will get a bonus at the start of the round. Then each player will get one player card of the chosen color with these tokens, which represent shares of that player's company, then nine wooden plans and eight discs. One of those discs will be placed on this influence track. The second one will be used on this bidding track and the remaining six discs will be placed on these industry tracks. Then each player will also have two action tokens. Then 150 money, the game currency are Indian rupees, crores, I'll call them money. And then the certain number of promoters, which depend on the position of your discs on the influence track. Then each player will get two agenda cards and choose one of them secretly and keep that card hidden from other players, but for the sake of explanation, I'll keep that card face up. And players will also get to choose one policy card at the start of the game, but this card will be kept face up. Now, I already mentioned that the corporate agenda card is your secret private objective, which you have to keep secret from other players. And the same applies to your money, the promoters, and also these kind of favor tokens, these are secret information and you can use your player screen to hide that information. Everything else is always a open information. Then randomly determine the starting player who will get this first player card or first player token and one additional action token. And that's the end of the setup. The game is played over seven rounds and each round has four phases. In the first phase, the starting player will activate one of the regions and 
That region will generate bonuses for all players who have plans in these cities. In the second phase, these round events will be played. These letters P mean that players will bid for these policy cards. Then in the third and the sixth round, players will gain revenue and will have to pay dividends and they will have a chance to support national projects. And they can do that by spending promoters and money and gain influence and favor. Then in the third phase of the round, players will bid for these industries using this bidding track and the winning player will become the starting player for the next round. Finally, in the fourth phase, the action phase, players will take actions or strategy actions, which are some kind of special actions. All players have two action tokens, which means they can take two different actions. However, the starting player, also called the tycoon player, has one available action token, so that player may play another action. And that's why the bidding in a previous phase is so important, because one additional action in this game is a big deal. Now, with those six actions, you can, for example, build the industries you won in the bidding phase. You can also buy shares of other players, which you store on this space on your player card. You can gain more promoters. You can also take one of these strategy actions or special actions. If needed, you can always take a loan and you can also activate all your policy cards and gain resources for free. The game ends at the end of the seventh round. Then players will gain revenue and will have to pay dividends one more time. And then you determine the winner. There are two major scoring areas in this game. One of them is this influence track and the other are your assets. When you build an industry, that industry has asset value printed on the card and that's the value which you score at the end of the game. In addition, over the course of the game, you may buy shares of other players. Those shares will also have certain value. The player with the highest value of their industries will have the shares with the highest value and the player with the lowest value of their industries will have the lowest value of their shares. So when you combine the value of your industries and of your shares, that determines your total asset value. Then when you build the industry, you will also increase your influence. Some policies will increase your influence as well. And you can gain quite a lot of influence from these planning commission cards, which are basically the end game objective cards. When you add all those influence points together, you get a total influence value. Now, if you have the highest asset value and also the highest influence value, you totally dominate the game and you win the game. If not, then the victory will be awarded either to the player with the highest asset value or the player with the highest influence value. And the winner will be the player with the highest favor, which is the third element of the game. You score favor from your corporate agenda card, so from your own personal objective. Then from these two endgame favor bonus tokens, you get favor based on how high or how far you are on the corresponding industry tracks. Then you may get favor tokens from specific actions in the game. And finally, some cards will also give you favor points at the end of the game. So from those two players with the highest asset value and the highest influence value, the player with the higher favor value wins the game. So now I'm going to explain all phases of one round and we will start with the first phase, activating the new region. In this phase, the tycoon player, the first player, will choose one of the four regions of India that will generate the bonus. The map is split into four regions by these lines and when you choose the region and move the pawn to that region, all players who have plans in that region will get the indicated bonus. In the first round of the game, nobody will get any bonus because there are no plans built yet. In all the subsequent rounds, the first player must move the pawn to any of those three regions. The pawn may not remain in the same region. And after that, the players will get the indicated bonus and they will get it as many times 
as they have plans in that region. In this example, blue player would get two promoter tokens, the red player would get one. Yellow player would get nothing because this plant is not in the eastern region. In the second phase of the round, this round events will be triggered. This letter P indicates that players will bid for policies. These two symbols indicate that first players will gain revenue and pay dividends, and then they may support national projects. And these two events only take place in the round three and six, and they have to be executed from top to bottom. So first gaining the revenue, paying dividends, and then supporting the national projects. Now I'm going to explain all those three events in more detail. When bidding for the policy, secretly take any number of these promoters, and remember promoters and money are secret information. Take these promoters into your hand and close your fist. You may also take zero promoters. And when all players are done, they all simultaneously reveal their bids. Now the player with the highest bid wins the bid. So let's say the red player would bid nothing, yellow player bid two promoters and the blue player bid three promoters. Blue player is the winner. The winner pays all these promoters to the current tycoon player. So these would go to the yellow player. In case the winner would be the tycoon player, they would pay the promoters to the general supply. Then all other players who lost the bid place all these promoters to their own strategy pool, which is this section of the action board. Then the winning player would choose one of those two phase up policy cards, take the card and place it face up in front of them. Because as I already mentioned, all the policy cards are always visible to all players. And then the other card, which was not chosen, will get one promoter token as a bonus. So next time, if someone chooses this card, they will also take the promoter token or tokens together with that card. Then flip another card face up from the top of the draw deck. In case of a tie, so let's say two or more players would bid the highest number of promoters. The player further ahead on the influence track wins the tie. In this case, it would be the blue player. If those two players would be in the same space, then the player who is on top wins the tie. By the way, anytime you move your disc on any track, if you end the movement on the space with another token, with another disc, place your own disc on top of that disc. Then when you gain revenue and dividends, sum up all these revenue numbers on all your built industries and built industries are these industry cards where you don't have your plans. So in this example, here we have revenue 30 and 15 that's 45 rupees. And then you get 10 money for each of your opponent's shares in your possession. In this example, yellow player would get 10, 20, 30 money, but these come from those players. So here, the blue player would have to pay 20 money to the yellow player, and then the red player would have to pay 10 money to the yellow player. On the other hand, if the yellow player would have their own shares, in other opponent's hands, the yellow player would have to pay 10 money to the owners of those shares. If you wouldn't have enough money to pay for your shares in other opponent's hands, then you have to take the emergency loan, which I'm going to talk about later in the video. And finally, when this national projects event is triggered, starting from the tycoon player and then going clockwise, each player may use promoters and money, any mix of them, to gain influence and favors. This is optional, you don't have to do it. If you choose to do it, you may spend promoters or money or both and activate the benefit multiple times. In the third phase of the round, players will bid for these industries. This bidding takes place in every single round. The bidding starts with the tycoon player, the first player, and then continues clockwise, then returns back to the tycoon player and goes clockwise around the table for the second time, and then the bidding ends. So each player has two chances to increase their bid. When it's your turn, 
you may either increase the bid or you may pass. If you pass, you may no longer participate in this bidding. The minimum bid to start the bidding must be the minimum value of these three industries in the display. In this case, it would be 40 money. And obviously you can only bid that amount of money if you have that amount of money. And you mark your bid with your disc on this bidding track. Then the next player may either increase the bid or pass. If you decide to increase the bid, the minimum increase is 5, but you can also increase by any other value, always the multiplies of 5. If you decide to pass, you don't bid and you also don't enter the bid in the second round. And by the way, even the first player to enter the bid may choose to pass in the first round and completely skip the bidding. So let's say the red player increases the bid by 10. Then the turn goes to the blue player. Let's say the blue player increases the bid to 55. And then the bidding goes around the table for the second round. Let's say the yellow player chooses to increase the bid to 65. Then red player may decide to pass, which means the red disc doesn't move. And then the blue player again may increase the bid or pass. Since the blue player is second in the bidding right now, they may decide to pass as well, because in this industry bidding, the two highest bidders will get to choose one of the industry cards. So after the bidding, those two highest bidders will have to pay the corresponding amount of money from their personal supply to the general reserve. And then the highest bidder, in this case the yellow player, chooses one of those three available cards and places the card face up somewhere in their player area and places one of these wooden plants on that industry card. That means the yellow player now has a license to build that industry, but it's not built yet. Then the second highest bidder will do the same. They will choose one of those two remaining industry cards. And again, the third card, the unchosen card, will gain one promoter token. And if that card will be chosen by some other player later in the game, the player will also collect those promoter tokens. Then again, refill the display by drawing two cards from the draw deck and placing them face up. Then all other players don't have to pay anything for the bidding. Actually, they even gain three promoters as a bonus free of charge to their strategy pool. Finally, the highest bidder will become the Tycoon player, the first player for the next round. Finally, the fourth phase of each round is the action phase in which players will take these actions, starting with the Tycoon player, with the first player, and then continuing clockwise. On your turn, you have to take one of these action tokens and place it on a specific action. You can have these two basic action tokens, then the Tycoon player has this extra action token and over the course of the game you may also collect these extra action tokens which you can use obviously as an extra action. So take one of your action tokens, place it on any action and then perform the action. Then it's the next player's turn. That player does the same, chooses an action and performs that action. You can always choose an action which was already taken by another player However, you may never choose the same action twice. You must choose a different action. So in this case, let's say the yellow player would choose the politics action and again perform that action immediately. Once all players perform these two actions, then the tycoon player, as indicated on the tycoon card, will use the special action token. And again, that player must choose a different action since this is the yellow player they must choose one of the other actions other than build and politics in this case. Then other players may continue taking actions if they use this special extra action token. In that case, they may use any action, even the action they have already chosen this round. So for example, the red player already played the politics action with this token, they may play that action again. Instead of taking an action, you may decide to pass. In that case, your actions are over. And if you don't spend any of these extra action tokens, they are carried over to the next round. Once everyone has used all their actions, the action phase is over. 
and the game will progress to the next round. Now I'm going to explain all these actions in more detail. So the first action is this build action. With this action you may build one of your unbuilt industries. First choose any empty space, any empty city on the map, let's say we will choose the Bangalore. Then calculate the cost of that industry. To do that check these industry icons at the bottom of the card. Here we have the minerals and the transportation. And you have to pay the cost to the leaders of the corresponding industries. The leader is the player whose disc is highest on the corresponding track. In case there are more players in the highest space on the track, the player whose disc is on top is the industry leader. And if you are the leader of that industry, you don't have to pay anything for that industry. And in case there was no disc in that particular industry, it is assumed that there is some kind of a neutral governmental token in the first space of that industry track. So you pay the cost to the general supply. Now to calculate the cost for these three industries, minerals, fuel and agriculture, you have to pay two money for each level of that industry leader. So here the blue player is at level three, which means three times two, six money to the blue player. If that blue player would be in the fifth position, that would be five times two, ten money to the blue player. And again, if there was no disc here, with this virtual governmental token in the first space, you would have to pay two money to the general supply. The situation is different with the energy and transportation cost. Here, the industry leader will get one money for each distance between the current metro which is the city on the map with these double lines. There are four of them, Madras, Bombay, Delhi and Calcutta. And the distance is measured along these golden lines, golden roads. And you have to count the number of cities on that road, including the metro city and the city where you build that industry or where you build the plant. In our example, we have to start in Calcutta. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 cities to Bangalore, again including that Calcutta city. So the 13 money would go to the red player. By the way, this finance track is never part of the building cost. It is only used to check the loan intake and some other benefits. Then you can finally build the plant, immediately gain the benefits in the top left hand and the top right hand corners of the card. In this case you would move by two spaces up on the fuel track and you would gain five influence points. So five influence points for the yellow player and moving up two spaces on this fuel industry track. And then after you build the plant you also gain the benefits coming from that city. So here there will be another six points of influence for the yellow player. On top of that you also gain a benefit of that region, so here the yellow player would also gain a favor token. Anytime you move up on these industry tracks you get all those bonuses even if you pass over them. So for example if the yellow player would move up two spaces on this track they would get 5 plus 10, 15 money immediately. And when you manage to have your disc in every single column you can choose one of these available conglomerate bonuses tokens and get those printed bonuses, powerful bonuses immediately. So for example here you would gain 40 money and 5 influence points. When you take those benefits that token is removed from the game. One last note, each of these spaces can be occupied by any number of players. However, the last space, the seventh row, can only be occupied by one player. Then the next action is this master action. With this action you must move minimum one, maximum six promoters from your own personal supply to your corresponding strategy pool. And then you take the merit card. Merit cards are located here on the game board. Take the top card from the deck. Keep this card or cards hidden from other players these merit cards are one-time use cards, when and how you can use the card, it's specified on the card, and when you use the card, you can place it in a discard pile. Then with the next action you can buy shares of other players. First, choose one of the opponents, and then take the top 
share tile from their player card, pay the indicated cost, here it would be 40, and you have to pay this 40 from your supply to that player. So you buy the share from that player for 40, then flip it face down, that value is no longer important, and then increase your influence by two for each share of any other player you currently have. In this case, you have four shares, so you would increase your influence by eight. Your opponents may never deny you selling their shares. Then the next action is this politics action. With this one, you activate all these politics bonuses from all your policy cards. That may include gaining influence, you may gain promoters or you may gain coins or money. So take all these benefits from all your policy cards and as indicated in the action space, after that gain one favor token. Then I'm going to skip the strategy action for now and go to the loan action. When you take this action, check your current position on the finance track, which at the start of the game is zero and gain the indicated number of money from the bank. So when you take the first loan, you get 30 money. After that, move your token one space up on the finance track. So when you take the first loan, you would simply place your disc to the first space. Together with the money, also take this promissory note, which is just a reminder that at the end of the game, you have to pay 50 money to repay that loan. If you don't, you will suffer some unpleasant consequences. Then the next time you would take a loan, you would get 35 money and again, move your disc one space up. And again, you would have to take another promissory note. And if you don't want to spend an action to take a loan, you can always take this emergency loan. This is a free action, so it doesn't use any of your action tokens. However, you only get 25 money and of course you get the promissory note. There is a limit of maximum 10 promissory notes you can have over the course of the game, but hopefully you will never have to reach that limit. And now coming back to this strategy action, you can only take this action if you have sufficient number of promoters in your strategy pool, because you will have to discard number of these promoters to take the strategy action. There are two kinds of these strategy actions. These are called administrative actions and they are always available to all players. To take the first action, you have to simply remove two promoters from your strategy pool and you get the action token, the extra action token. And with the second one, again, you have to remove two promoters from your strategy pool. Then you can choose one of the three available industry cards. Pay money equal to the double of the asset value of that industry card. So for example, if I would choose this one, the asset value is 40, so I would have to pay 80 money. And as a bonus, you would gain either 10 money back or to influence, then take the card and as usual, place it in your play area and place one of the wooden plants on top of that card. Then immediately refill the display with the new card. Then all other strategy actions, these sales, lobby, advertising and export, follow a slightly different procedure. First, you have to remove the indicated number of promoters from the strategy pool. In this example, it would be three promoters. These are again discarded to the general supply. Then take your top, the cheapest share token, flip it face down and Choose one of those spaces from that action and gain the benefit. Cover that space with the token and gain the benefit. In this case, you would get 30 money. Each space can only be covered once. So next time you choose the strategy action, you may only choose any other empty space. With this strategy action, the lobby action, you can choose one of these two phase up policy cards and place them in your play area. If you take the card with the promoters or promoter tokens, you take the tokens as well. Then with this action, with the office action, you have to discard five promoters, but you can take one of the unused wooden plants and immediately build it in any empty city. You gain the benefit of that city and also the corresponding benefit of that region. 
Then with the advertising action you simply gain influence points and with the expert action you may move one space or two spaces up on any of these industry tracks. If you are allowed to move two spaces up you can actually split it and move one space up on two different tracks. And that's it, that's the end of the action phase. At the end of this phase take back your action tokens. If you have any unspent extra action tokens they are carried over to the next round and then the tycoon player card and the token are given to the player with the highest bid in the third phase. Finally move the round marker to the next round and that's the end of the round. At the end of the seventh round you move the marker to the next space which actually triggers the end of the game. As this symbol indicates players will get revenue and dividends one more time and then the game will be over and we'll proceed to final scoring. First of all starting with the tycoon player and going clockwise each player may spend 50 money to pay off the loans. For each loan you pay back, remove one promissory note. And then once done, calculate your total asset value and the total influence value. We'll start with the asset value. First, sum up all these asset values of all the industries you have built. Don't count the industries which you have not built. In this example we have 60 plus 60 that's 120 plus 30 that's 150. This basic asset value determines the value of your own shares. Now let's say the red player had the highest asset value, then we had the yellow player and then the blue player. Now all shares of the red player would have the asset value of 60, the shares of the yellow player would have the asset value of 40, and 20 for the blue player. In case of a 4 player game the shares of that player would have the asset value of 10. Now come back to your player card and sum up the values of shares of other players. Don't count your own shares, they are basically worthless at the moment. In this example we have 3 blue shares and 1 red. 1 red share has the asset value of 60 Three blue shares together have also the asset value of 60, so that's the total asset value of 120 for the shares. Then add the asset values from the finance track and if you reach the stop spaces of the transportation track, in this example the yellow player here has the additional asset value bonus of 40. Then some merit cards may also give you some asset value. However, if you have any unpaid loan, that reduces your asset value by 50. Now sum up all these values and that's your total asset value. Then calculate your total influence value. In addition to the influence you have gained over the course of the game, add the influence points from these planning commission cards, so add these points to your influence. And finally some of your policy cards may also give you influence. And again if you have unpaid promissory note that would reduce your influence by 7 for each unpaid loan. When you add all these numbers together you get your total influence. And now if there's only one player who has the highest total influence and the highest total asset value that player dominates the game and immediately wins the game. If that's not the case, let's say the red player has the highest influence and the yellow player would have the highest asset value, then only one of these two players may win the game and these players will check their total favor. To calculate your favor, add up the values from your favor tokens, from your corporate agenda card, then your policy cards also have the favor value in the bottom right corner. And finally add the favor from these end game sector bonuses. These two tokens indicate which industry tracks provide favor. Here we have the energy and the finance. So that's this track and this one. And for each level you score one favor point. So for this finance track yellow player would score three favor points. Then when you add up all those values together 
One of those two players with a higher favor value wins the game. In order to play a two-player game or even a solo game, you have to introduce one automatic player. And for a solo game, you actually have to use two of them because you need at least three players. That player will use a deck of cards, which consists of cards with the easiest, medium and the highest difficulty levels. You can choose various difficulty levels and based on that level, you will mix a certain number of these cards to form a deck of 36 cards. The higher the difficulty, the more cards with these more gears. During the setup, set this automatic player up as any other regular player with all the wooden components and discs and plants and also the share tokens. And every time a turn or a decision is required from this automatic player, simply flip the top card of the deck and based on the current phase, you will execute the instructions on the card you have just flipped face up. So, for example, in the first phase, if this player would be the Tycoon player, you would activate the region based on this symbol at the top of the card. Then, for example, for the second phase, again, if it was this player's turn, you would flip the card and perform the action based on the symbols for the second phase and so on. Here, this is the number of promoters the automatic player would use. This is the number of influence points and the favor tokens they would gain during the uh, national project support event. Then during the industry bidding, this is the number by which the automatic player increases the bid. And for the action phase, these are three actions that that player would try to perform. Now, there are certain special rules. This automatic player has infinite number of promoters and unlimited amount of money. Anytime you have to pay this player, you pay the money to the general supply. Anytime you need to gain the money from this automatic player, you take it from the general supply. The same applies to uh, promoters. But this automatic player collects the favor tokens. Anytime this player needs to choose a policy card or the industry card, it chooses the card with highest value, the asset value or the highest influence. Anytime that player takes the strategy action, they cover the uh, leftmost strategy action from that specific space. And by the way, when they score this wild industry track, they choose the leftmost from these two tracks, which are scored at the end of the game as the favor points. Since this automatic player is going to take part in the bidding and will actually win a lot of industries, it will act very similarly to the human player. And based on the chosen difficulty, this automatic player can actually easily win the game. The game also comes with this optional headlines module. This deck of headline cards replaces one of the planning commission cards. And at the start of each round, flip the top card face up and read the event and immediately execute that event. Some of these effects are applied at the start of the round, some of them at the end of the round. Sometimes it lasts during the entire round. And then at the end of the round, remove the card from the game and at the start of the next round, flip the new card face up. So that's how we play Tycoon 1981 India. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash